Hello on Academies. This is me, Vignesh NP, and I'm here to present the 10th lesson of class 11th biology on cell cycle and cell division. And this will be the final lesson in this part of comprehensive biology of class 11th. So let's move on. My name is Vignesh NP, and teaching is my passion. You can follow me at an academy by hitting the link below. So to introduce, according to cell theory, cells arise from pre-existing cells. This we have learnt in the previous chapters. The process by which this occurs is called cell division. Any sexually reproducing organism starts its life cycle from a single cell zygote and then moves on. Cell cycle. So the cell division does not stop with the formation of the mature organism but continues throughout its life cycle. The stages through which a cell passes from one division to the next is called cell cycle. So cell cycle is the stages through which a cell passes from one division to the next. Phases of cell cycle. Cell cycle is broadly divided into two phases interphase and M phase or mitosis phase, the interphase and M phase. So the interphase, it's a period of preparation of cell division. It's not the actual cell division. It's a preparation of cell division. It is further subdivided into G1 phase, period when cell grows and carries out normal metabolism. S phase, it marks the phase of DNA replication and chromosome duplication. And G2 phase, phase of cytoplasmic growth. You can see these phases here. G1, S and G2 phase. Please learn this one. Now we will move on to mitosis. Mitosis is the most dramatic period of cell cycle. Number of chromosomes in parent and progeny are equal and hence these are also called equational division equational division mitosis it is broadly divided into four stages although it should be understood that there is no clear-cut division of mitosis okay it's just divided into four stages this first is the prophase in prophase chromosome condensation occurs chromosome condense and simultaneously the centriole moves to the two opposite poles nuclear envelope and nucleolus disappear and the spindle fibers start appearing spindle fibers attached to kinetochores of chromosomes metaphase is marked by alignment of chromosomes at the equatorial plates and during anaphase the centromeres divide and the chromatids start move towards the Two opposite poles at the telophase the chromatids reach the two opposite poles and the chromosomal elongation starts nucleus and nuclear membrane reappears you can see all this what i have said till now in this condensation and the reappearing all this is given in this figure please go through this Nuclear division is then followed by the cytoplasmic division and is called cytokinesis. Thus, we know that mitosis is an equational division. Equational division means where chromosome number of parents is conserved in the daughter cell. Next is the meiosis. Meiosis occurs in diploid cells which are distinct from gametes. It is also called reduction division since it reduces the chromosome number by half while making the gametes. And in sexual reproduction, when these two gametes fuse, the chromosome number is restored. Meiosis 1. Meiosis 1 is divided into prophase 1, metaphase 1, anaphase 1 and telophase 1. And it is broadly divided... <coughs> uh, and meiosis is broadly divided into meiosis 1 and meiosis 2. And in meiosis 1, homologous chromosomes pair to form bi bivalence and undergo crossing over. 
meiosis 1 has a long prophase which is further subdivided into five phases these five phases are leptotene zygotene pachytene diplotene and diakinesis during metaphase 1 the bivalence arrange on the equatorial plate you can see here the bivalence arranging on the equatorial plates it is followed by anaphase 1 in which homologous chromosome move towards the opposite poles with both their chromatids you can see that here too each pole receives half the chromosome number of the parent cell in telophase 1 the nuclear membrane and the nucleolus reappear okay now we'll talk about meiosis 2 meiosis 2 is pretty much similar to mitosis here four haploid cells are formed at the end of meiosis 2 and you can see in detail here that it is very similar to mitosis and it is also divided into four parts prophase 1 prophase 2 metaphase 2 and phase 2 and telophase 2 so the homework for this is to read about the significance of mitosis and also the significance of meiosis and make a chart of the various stages of mitosis and meiosis for easy remembering so please rate review and recommend my courses on an academy and make sure that you enroll for these courses and the next part will come soon and please enroll for that too so that we can carry on this education revolution thank you thank you all